tonight on Marketplace. Nice to meet you. It's tax time, and we're putting financial advisors, the people you trust with your cash, they're kind of snakes in the grass, to the test. I put all my faith in them. Should this person be doing that job? Nope, absolutely not. Will our hidden cameras get detected? Are you the pants going? Um, no. As we reveal outrageous promises. It's almost like a free ride. And tips that'll have you saying, show me the money. We're in Guelph, Ontario. Just because you're picking me up now. Wiring up 32-year-old fitness instructor, Melissa Carrero. How are you feeling? Have you ever worn a hidden camera before? A little bit anxious, <laughs> I won't lie. Melissa will be wearing three hidden cameras as she shops around for money advice. Kind of feel like they're screaming at you, even though you probably would have no idea if I just met you on the street. Like everybody can tell. <laughs> Everyone's staring at me. Yes. No, you look good. <laughs> Our undercover mother's conservative with her cash. And for this mission, she'll be sharing her financial details. And there's a twist to this test. I've got one last thing for you. $50,000 in cold, hard cash. There you go. Don't get too excited. It's not real, but that's the money you're going to tell advisors you have to play with. Perfect. Melissa is going to say she's got an inheritance of 50 grand. That's about how much the average Canadian has to invest. She'll test what financial advisors tell her to do with all that cash. We're sending her to the big five banks and some other big financial outfits chosen randomly and through our research. About one third of Canadians rely on advisors and the stakes are high. I lost my house and my marriage and the family, all because I trusted a financial advisor. It got me upset because I planned to uh, retire quite comfortably. If the right questions were not asked for me to make an informed decision. Hi Preet, nice to see you. Nice to see you again. Helping us assess Melissa's visits, Preet Banerjee, a financial expert who knows the world of financial advisors, because he used to be one. I have a funny feeling that we're going to see some scenarios that I'm not going to like. Hmm, we've got a checklist for financial advisors. I was just wondering if yeah. a financial advisor would be available to speak with. Sure, look right okay. at one. First up, what do they tell Melissa about debt? What is the credit limit and what do you have outstanding? Remember, Melissa owes about a hundred grand. Our expert says advisors should tell her to use some of that inheritance to pay down that debt. Right now, we're in a low interest rate environment. Even investments aren't projected to grow very quick right now. And if Melissa is conservative, which she sounds like she is, then there is merit to actually paying down the debt. Some advisors get it right, like at BMO. You need to kind of save for a rainy day, mm -hmm. as well as, you know, Let's pay down, down your debt yeah. as, as soon as possible. At Investors Group. Some paying off the debt, there'll be some putting into RSPs. This guy does say to pay that debt down, but there's no rush. You are going to be in debt for the rest of your life. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's just the reality of living in these times. In an initial visit, bringing up debt is crucial, says Preet Banerjee, so advisors get the full picture. Could you see any scenario where it would be okay for a financial advisor not to ask about debt? Almost never. But that's exactly what happens at Dundee Wealth, now called Hollis Wealth. The advisor doesn't even mention debt until Melissa brings it up. The one thing that we're not sure about is in our debt. Okay. You know, do we... Okay, use photo your debt. Yeah. Yeah, and how is that <laughs> Most financial advisors in Canada don't make money recommending that you pay down debt. Whereas if you invest money, then clearly there's money to be earned involved in that transaction. So even if paying off a debt might be in the client's best interest, they might not recommend that? Right, and I think this is a big conflict of interest that people need to be aware of. So the takeaway, talk about debt with your advisor and check out if they recommend paying it down. In Barrie, Ontario. So this is it here. 
Corey Wickham takes us past the house he used to own before bad financial advice cost him his marriage and his home. Lots of hard work and lots of hours to have it all taken away by your financial advisor. I'm going to have to declare personal bankruptcy. Now he's living at a friend's place. His advisor convinced Corey and his wife to sign up for loans. I put all my faith in him. And then invested that borrowed cash. Here's one loan for $106,081.80. The investments tanked and the lenders came looking for their money. What do you mean I'm responsible for $150,000? How that that's ludicrous. That that's not what was supposed to happen. And nor was it ever explained to me that this was going to these were the uh, possibilities. That's when Corey found out his advisor had signed him up for high-risk investments. Thing is, Corey doesn't like risk. No, money's too hard. It's hard to come by, and I worked really hard for to get to where I had gotten. So we're checking to see if financial advisors ask Melissa how she feels about risk. I wouldn't ever want to, at the end of the day, not make any money and lose money on my investment. Some advisors suss out risk with Melissa, like at RBC. So, in 2008, if you were invested in this portfolio, you would have lost 24.1% of your investment. Yeah, it's a little unnerving. Sam? But at Primerica, these reps ask about everything. Do you have other responsibilities, like, you know, debt or mortgages? Except how comfortable yeah. Melissa is with risk. Okay. I've got a Western strategy to share with you. Okay. Okay. We're not going to do risk today. We will leave that yes. for another day. Yes. It will be yeah. somewhere simple story. She asks, are we going to talk about risk? And he says, yeah, later. It's a simple story. <laughs> yeah, risk is generally not a simple story because if it was a simple story, there wouldn't be so many people who have been burned by risk in the investment markets. Preet says, be careful. Financial advisors can make more money steering you into riskier investments. There is a bit of a conflict of interest for some advisors to want to be more risky with your portfolio because it means if your portfolio is bigger, their paycheck is a little bit bigger. So the takeaway, be firm about your tolerance for risk and check the paperwork to make sure they got it right. Next on our checklist, something we call promises, promises. How much do advisors say they'll make Melissa if she invests her 50 grand? Bank stocks, oil stocks. Index linked GICs. RISTs for Cali, right? First, Preet says you should know advisors are selling products. I mean, every financial advisor, to some degree, is going to wear a sales hat. It's just some are a little bit more salesy than others. So if we buy, they make money for themselves or their companies. Tax-free savings account with an RRSP. Mutual fund stocks, bonds, GICs, Canadian equity fund, etc. Over at Primerica, it's surprising to hear these advisors <laughs> claim they don't want to sell a thing. We're not here to sell powder, you know? Right. Only. It's not like, oh, this one is fantastic, look at them, as he said. But they sure suggest hefty profits based on how they say markets fared in the past. Yeah. Every segment of 10 to 20 years, yes. there is usually called a historical rate of return of 10 to 12 percent. And mention that high return over and over. Swim probably will make about 10 to 12 percent. Make more, maybe get 10, 20 percent. Okay. So it will make a little bit more than 10 to 12. Yeah. Yeah. Potential. Okay. What do you think, seeing this advice being handed out? So you can't go around telling people that you should expect 10 to 12 percent and hopefully more than that because there's, you just can't back that up. And that sales job's nothing compared to what Melissa's about to hear. After a year, you should be able to get an extra 10,000 at this. That's ridiculous. Oh, it's free. It's almost like a free ride. Complete and utter BS. And what happens when our hidden cameras get detected? It, it looks like you have lights on the back of your pocket. Oh. When we come back. Our undercover tester is rigged up with hidden cameras. Melissa Carrero's helping us test financial advisors in Southern Ontario. Her one big fear, getting caught. And guess what? Are your pants blowing? 
Um, no. It's <laughs> a really weird question. Maybe you're wearing like a linen shirt or something, but it looks like you have lights on the back of your pockets. Oh. She continued to describe to me how my pants looked while they were glowing. <laughs> what was going through your mind? Uh, to turn and run. I wondered if it would be appropriate for me to just walk away. <laughs> Lucky for us, Melissa talks her way out of it and keeps on testing. And you won't believe what happens next. She's barely in the door of Dundee Wealth, now called Hollis Wealth. Bear with us, please. And the advisor's suggesting he can earn her a bundle on her $50,000 inheritance. If we do it right, you can get, um, let's see, 5000 within just a few months. Couple months, yeah. Wow, and he's not done yet. 10,000 after a year, or 15,000, or maybe 20,000 after a year. <laughs> <laughs> so you're laughing. Yeah, that's one of the worst pieces of advice I've ever heard in my life. That's ludicrous. Why is he making such outlandish promises? Quite frankly, he's either incompetent or he's lying. Those are the only two possible answers for giving an answer like that to someone who says that they're a conservative investor. Have you ever heard of anything like this? Oh, sure, this happens, uh, I wouldn't say all the time, but think about it, if someone comes to you and says, hey, listen, I can make your money double in a year, that perks up the ears of a lot of people because we want to make money. So the takeaway, don't show your money if the advisor promises big returns. Mutual fund is a pool of, uh, a pool of money. A lot of the talks about mutual funds make sense because that's what most of us buy. But we don't seem to know what we're paying. Please, please, please tell us what your charges are. That's all I ask. So, last on our checklist, how straight up are advisors when we ask about fees? Okay, let's look at our next piece of tape. I'm scared. <laughs> Over at Investors Group, the advisor is pretty vague about fees. We're not the lowest fee people out there. Okay. But we're not the highest fee people out there. Mm -hmm. We're above Bank Montreal, below RBC. Finally, a number. It, um, from 1% to, I would say, below 2%. At Money Concepts, can you figure this out? We receive a trade commission prorated monthly based on our average monthly assets. Turns out the financial industry doesn't have to tell you how much investing can cost you in dollars and cents. But check it out. If Melissa puts her 50,000 into mutual funds and they grow 6% a year, after 25 years, she'll have $214,000. Not bad. But she'll pay a management fee, about 2%, on her entire nest egg every single year. So by the time she's ready to retire, those fees will have gobbled up $100,000. And that money, it'll get divvied up among the companies and advisors. If you talk to your advisor about fees and they give you a song and dance or they're not open and honest about it, that should be a red flag. And there sure are red flags over at Edward Jones. It's free, it's almost like a free ride. It's free, it's a free ride, he right. says. Never a free ride. This advisor's talking about mutual funds. Eventually, he admits there's a fee. So they're charging 2%. Okay, but get this. He says Melissa will only pay it on the amount that her investment makes. On the growth <laughs> of the 50,000. Okay. So if you're 50,000, grew by 1,000. So it'd be 2% on the 1,000? Yeah, 2% on the 1,000. It would only be on then what that 50,000 has, has made. done. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Kind of neat, okay. eh? Yeah. It's complicated, but it's neat. I'm trying to uh, make sure I don't use any profanity right now. That was an epic fail. Epic, epic fail. fail. Epic fail. Complete and utter BS. How misleading is this guy? Incredibly misleading. You cannot, you categorically cannot say that. That is not how the fees are charged on mutual funds. In this case, if it was a 2% fee, it's a 2% on everything that's in your account, whether the market goes up, whether the market goes down, it does not matter. Is it possible it, there's no ill will intended here? He just doesn't know what he's doing? <sighs> Tough to say without being inside his head, but I have a feeling that he knows better. Melissa's take on it all? I believed him. I looked for information from him, and he gave me misinformation. And when she heads to RBC to ask about fees... Is it just on what we're making, or is that of the, our full amount that's in there? Melissa's quest for a straight answer fizzles again. That fee is, um, 
Um, it's on the percentage of returns okay. of the fund. Okay. So it's like, sorry, I just want to make sure I'm thinking about this <laughs> properly. Like it's not on, I'm just seeing if I can find like a easy definition. Mm -hmm. I want to put my head through this TV. Why? That was, I can't even explain how bad that was. If you can't explain the fees on a mutual fund, which is such a popular investment in Canada that almost a trillion dollars is invested by Canadians in them, you should not call yourself a financial advisor, period. So the takeaway, hold on to your cash until you understand what you're paying. So who is giving us advice? The people Melissa visits have a range of credentials, but the bare minimum to get licensed as a financial advisor? Just an online course and a multiple choice exam, you need 60% to pass. It all means one thing for Preet Banerjee, buyer beware. There are a lot of great financial advisors out there, but there are a lot of bad ones too, which is why it makes sense to take the time to try and find the best one for you. Why aren't any of the financial organizations sending in hidden cameras and just testing their own uh, personnel like we did? That's a good question. I think they might be afraid of what they might see. Uh, I think they already know that there are a lot of issues out there. Turns out they do. We've learned Canada's regulators are now planning their own undercover shopping, but don't want to talk to Marketplace about our results. And the companies we visited? We contacted all 10 of them, asked several for an interview, but no one would talk. As for the advisor at Dundee Wealth? 10,000 after a year, 15,000. In a statement, his company accepts responsibility and says the advisor would not typically manage requests of this nature. It says he made a mistake and has been suspended. And while Primerica wouldn't offer us an interview, these guys did have an offer from Melissa. We'll help you get licensed so that that can be a second career. Yep, she can become an advisor too. Is that what you were looking for? No. I mean, I was looking for them for advice. I didn't need a sales pitch on how I could, you know, join their team. Our undercover test is done. So, next time you go shopping for financial advice, visit our website and take our checklist with you. <laughs>